Hey everyone, and welcome to my Prusa i3 build log here. Uh, this is build log number 9. Sorry for the long delay there, but uh, hopefully I can pick up right where I left off. So uh, what I'm going to be doing here today is going a little bit into advanced configuration of the firmware. Um, back in my Marlin firmware here under configuration.h and I'm just going to slowly start going down into the first item we want to look at, and that's PID temperature. This is kind of under the uh, the uh, extruder information here and what pit temperature and what pit temp and, um, calibration does is it allows a smoother current to both your hot end and the the bed uh, giving it more uh, uniform flow and and really improves print quality. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure this PID temp is defined. If you forget what it is, is mainly you just wonder if there's two lines in front of it, you just want to make sure to delete them. Uh, once that's set, you want to make sure to have at least one of these defined uh, hot ends selected, the KP, KI, and KD. Um, if you have one of these hot ends, go ahead and just undefine, or sorry, define one of these and uh, go ahead and try it out. If you don't, uh, the next step is going to be uh, running the calibration test. And this is extremely simple. So with PID temp already open and your firmware updated and in, uh, with PID temp enabled, uh, you'd go into your favorite host software, go into the command lines and M, send M303. Now this is the generic Marlin PID temp um, calibration. Uh, you'll want to watch your um, your uh, information here, uh, basically the communication window, because as soon as you hit this, it's going to start auto PID tuning. Uh, now, for Marlin, the standard auto PID is uh, eight cycles at 150 degrees C. Uh, what I suggest is that you uh, want to PID tune to a temperature that you're normally going to be printing at. So if it's PLA, 185. If it's ABS, 120, 125. Um, to do so, uh, and to uh, change from the default, you basically would modify the code to say uh, M303C, meaning cycles, 8, or you can do 6. I wouldn't suggest going any lower than 6. So we want to go 8 cycles, and S is going to be your temperature. So for PLA, we say 185. Press send, and it will go ahead. Uh, it will start uh, increasing and, and heating up your uh, hot end and start running this PID tune cycle. When it's complete, uh, it will give you some KD, KI, and also uh, KI, KP, and KD values. Those values, you can take those, copy them right into your firmware here, and then upload back again, and you're set to go. Um, same thing you can do with the, also your bed. You can also uh, PID tune your uh, hot end bed as well. Make sure that PID temperature bed is defined. And you can see here we've got the same settings right here with our three locations of uh, KP, KI, and KD. Uh, this time around, we'll rather than just leaving it here, we have to add one more line or one more segment here, and that's going to be E-1, meaning that we're going to be uh, going after the hot bed, um, hot bed uh, location. So. Uh, if you forget, it actually is inside Marlin firmware right here. Uh, as you can see here, the cycles is set to eight and S is to ninety. Just like the hot bed, if you are sorry with the hot end, uh, try to pin tune around what temperature you want to be uh, you want to be using. So if it's going to be ABS, go ninety to a hundred. If it's going to be uh, PLA, sixty sixty five or so. Uh, so this is what the line would go, hit send, it'll run through its cycles, and you're good to go. After that we're going to keep going down here to the next uh, the next advanced settings, and these are the uh, feed rates and accelerations. So it, when you go in your slicing program you gotta remember uh, that when you set the speed you're talking about the the nozzle of the tool head speed. Uh, even though you say set it to 65, 85, or 200 millimeters a second, uh, really the other uh, axes could be moving a lot faster in order to move to those different locations. Here's these settings that allow you to these those movements to increase and decrease um, and move faster faster between those two points. Here we can see we've got a max feed rate here, and what that is is essentially it just maxes out or gives a ceiling to the feed rate in millimeters a second. So this would be used if, if you're noticing that during fast movements your X or your Y or any other motors are skipping. 
this is a nice upper limit in order to prevent that from happening. You can see here that I've got my Y set to 2, and that's because any faster than 2, my Ys are starting to skip. So it's something that uh, if you're noticing some issues, good place to start. Acceleration here, these are how fast uh, your acceleration, it basically your acceleration can go, or the upper limit. Same kind of idea as the feed rate, these are just ceiling numbers. So this is how uh, how fast exactly it will, uh, your moves will accelerate. Default acceleration is the acceleration that it moves to or it uses for the X, Y, and Z. And retraction acceleration is the same thing as the above except for retraction moves. I don't understand why X, Y, or Z are involved in this, but this would be the values for acceleration used uh, when on your extruder itself. If you're noticing that your extruder is um, skipping steps on retraction or you need it, want it to retract really fast, have a higher acceleration or a lower acceleration, here's your values. The last part of the movement here is jerk. And what jerk is, is it's the speed at which uh, between two, the start and the stop of two segments. So this is the beginning of, uh, these are ground corners, or the beginning and the ending of lines. Uh, this is the speed at which it transitions around. So if you're noticing gloppy corners or, um, or hard shaking and stuff, uh, increasing the speed will, or increasing this number will increase the speed at which it joins those segments, decreasing it will slow it down. So here's where you would uh, modify your X and Y, Z, or even extruder values. Uh, one of the last parts we're going to go under is the EEPROM. Uh, now I haven't used this feature a lot, but a lot of people do suggest it. Uh, what EEPROM does is it allows you to enter G codes into um, enter G codes into uh, your host software to modify some values inside of the firmware. This is really nice if you want to go ahead and modify your acceleration values or your jerk values without having to open up this whole software system, update, then push the file, push the firmware back up to your printer and try, test again. Uh, the way you'd want to use it, make sure to, that you have defined EEPROM settings is, is, well, there we go. Oops, there we go. Is defined. So make sure that's ready, set to go. And from there, you're good to go. Um, here's a few basic settings here M500, M501, M502. It stores parameters, reads your existing EEPROM parameters, reverts to factory settings. Uh, go ahead and it, take a look at some of the other uh, settings out there. Uh, go uh, on your favorite search engine and type in uh, RepRap G codes and look in the 200 series. There's quite a few different uh, uh, values that you can modify in the firmware without having to update this firmware. One of them is acceleration. I believe it's M202 or M203 allows you to uh, modify the acceleration values of your X, Y, and your Z. So if you're going ahead and you're modifying and calibrating your, your printer, Rather than going into the firmware here, changing your values, uploading it back to the printer, and then testing them, and then going back again, you can just simply issue these commands and modify the values and then keep printing. Uh, another quick trick that's really cool to use is in your host software, at least for the Repetier host, is this dry run button. Uh, dry run uh, disables the uh, extruder which allows you to run a G code or run a, some kind of uh, file and and to test your settings out. I would suggest a file that has a lot of back and forth movements if you want to test your set uh, to test your acceleration settings um, for see if your, <laughs> your printer starts falling apart because of fast movements and shaky movements. But this is a good way to test it, be able to run your printer through the paces without actually having to use up any uh, filament or having to wait for your extruder or your print bed to heat up. So this is kind of a quick bit, kind of a quick uh, go through with some of these advanced settings. I didn't want to go into as far as what these values are or suggesting any what the values you should, ha should have. Um, each value or each printer is going to be different, and those values are, are, are 
are going to be up to how your printer is built quality wise or the style of printer so I, I didn't want to go into too much deal to detail with that but just give you a rough idea of what these things actually do and and what uh, will happen when you uh, modify these values so go ahead try them out as always make sure you save a base copy of what you're what's already working for you and then make a copy and go ahead and modify these values as you can see here I've got some comments in here that say was previously uh, used before as I'm still testing out my own values too so uh, thanks again for watching these videos and uh, having the questions and comments so have a good one and I'll see you again